Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we are going to talk about soil fertility and pest management. So let's get started. We will discuss some of the methods for retaining soil fertility and management for pests. So one of the methods that we'll first talk about is IPM, which is Integrated Pest Management System. So what it is all about. So it's an ecosystem based strategy that focuses on effective and long term control on pest infestation such as rodents, ants, cockroaches, bugs and flies through a combination of techniques and practices which is not which is most economical and non hazardous to people and property and environment. Also in 1985 India declared IPM as official ministerial policy. So talking about some of the objectives so why we should stress on IPM are it has a threshold setting which means that uh, since a single pest does not always need to be controlled so once the pest population so once the pest population reaches the set threshold point where they become an economical and environmental threat critical IPM actions will apply to control pest populations so this is an interesting point that uh, a limit has been set uh, above which this uh, IPM gets activated to control the pest population, which becomes a serious threat for all the soil fertility. So, more this, so talking about the second objective would be monitoring and identifying pests. So, not all insects, weeds, and other living organisms are pests, and they don't really require control. So, this is a very true point that not all the insects are harmful and poses threat, but some do. But mostly they do not. So some of the organisms are harmless and even beneficial. So it is necessary to regular checking of the area for clear for early detection of pests. So this is a very important point that we need to differentiate between the two between the harmful ones and the non harmful ones so that we can identify the ones which are destroying the fire soil fertility. So detection of early pests are very important. So talking about the next point which is the monitoring and identification of pests which removes the possibility of unnecessary pesticides usage. So this is another great point that if we could detect the early detection of pests, so it would reduce the usage of pesticides. So we can definitely plan on some other alternative to reduce the pest growth. Also it is also monitors the effects of biological control agents. So if applied, yeah. So also we can control various other factors, uh, depending on the IPM strategies. So more than this. So talking about the next objective, which is prevention. So prevention it involves a cost-efficient, eco-friendly, and effective IPM measure to prevent pests from becoming a threat in an agricultural crop. For example, rotating between different crops. For example, don't, uh, don't plant garlic and onion in the same place for two years in a row. So there are some strategies uh, that generally farmers and people who grow these uh, all the cereals and fruits and vegetables, they know the strategy, basic strategies, so that to maintain the soil fertility for a longer period. So another, so one of the strategies would be not growing garlic and onion on the same piece of land. So selecting disease pest free seeds and transplants also using pest resistant varieties such as contender beans resist mildews also improving plant health so it can successfully compete against pests such as soil preparation fertility proper planting plant selection and mulching and mowing so these are some of the prevention method that we should take before any sort of management system like IAPM takes on so these are some general prevention measures that people do take for preventing any growth of pest. So above that, so if these after incorporating these methods, if pest still grows or persists in that soil, so we may go on to uh, inculcate the IPM strategy. Moving on with this, talking about the another objective, which is control. So once preventive measures are no longer effective or available, IPM programs evaluates proper control methods both for effectiveness and risk. Also, it involves making environmental environment unsuitable for pests, deprive pests of food, water and shelter, field sanitation, remove any weeds or diseased or 
dead plants and rotten fruit that can be that can harbor pest also introducing natural pest predators so this is another very interesting point with the help of ipm or integrated pest management so this program particularly helps the helps to maintain the soil fertility and does not allow the pest to grow on it by not providing suitable environment to thrive not providing enough nutrients such as food water and shelter also the fee also removing any sort of weeds or diseased or dead plants and introduction of natural pest predators would be a um, very good strategy for reducing the pest growth so moving on this so talking about the advantages of ipm which is integrated pest management so it promotes health plants and environment healthy plants and environment pardon also it promotes sustainable long term bio based pest management alternatives also it reduces environmental risk by employing more ecological uh, benefit control tactics protects agricultural crop and minimizes economic losses minimizes negative impacts to non target organism from the pest management activities and also they can be easily and efficiently implemented so these are some of the easy advantages that we can get after inculcating these strategies so but these are not easy to achieve so these take long period of time and long long time we need to take give it out for taking the growth and checking the growth time to time for the pests so there are some uh, good advantages that it offers so definitely it's a point of interest for controlling the pest management so talking about some of the disadvantages as well so every advantage comes with some sort of disadvantages as well so talking about the disadvantage of ipm so it's a extremely complex and requires a high level of understanding and planning so it is not possible for everyone to inculcate this method so it requires sort of a learning pre uh, good amount of learning of this process entire process and it is complex in nature so it's not possible for everyone so not possible for everyone who grows every sort of thing such as vegetables fruits to understand this uh, complex thing and inculcate in their system so it's a complex and requires high level of understanding and planning so also it's not uh, er yeah, it's not uh, in their reach also sometimes because it's a costly process as well also time and resource consuming so it's requires definitely time and resource consume uh, resource consumption definitely and also sometimes more costly than the traditional method of spraying pesticides to eliminate pests so other than the conventional method for reducing pests which is the use of pesticides it is much more costly so not everyone would like to throw light on this or use this system better they use better they be happy with using pesticides also it needs constant monitoring so yeah definitely it needs constant monitoring for checking the pest growth uh, so that they can reduce it timely also natural enemies of pests using some ipm can later become pests themselves so this is a very another good point so there can be mutations occurring in them so the ones which are used the predators which are used for pest reductions can later themselves become pests which can become even a bigger threat for the soil so that's this is a big disadvantage for the ipm program also requires great amount of outside knowledge as well so definitely it's not a easy process to inculcate and it requires a lot of learning and understanding and experimentation for putting this process into work actually so moving on with so talking about different types of ipm which is indicated pest management so there are three types basically so which is the cultural methods physical methods and genetic methods so the cultural method planting plants in certain growing conditions such as soil water shelter that suppresses pest growth so there are different types uh, in which this management system can be operated so the cultural method promotes growing plants in certain uh, conditions that suppresses pest growth so that is not particularly inducible for pest formation so this is a cultural method in physical methods uh, is used uh, through physical elimination or removal of pest from the area where host is present such as using barriers traps vacuuming pruning hoeing 
weed removal, hand picking, mowing or tillage. So this is a physical method by removing that particular area or freeing that area from pests where the host is present. And talking about the last method, which is the genetic method, is using pest resistant plant varieties developed by classical plant breeding or developing genetically modified pest resistant plant varieties such as bt cotton or potato resistant to potato blight so bt cotton uh, bt corn sorry bt corn and bt cotton is another genetically modified plant which is used so you must have heard about these organisms also so these are genetically modified uh, their dna is modified so that they can resist the action of pests and thus they can thrive without the uh, even in the presence of them so moving on with this is talking about another method which is a biological method so biological method under integrated pest management which is the fourth type pardon that was the that was not the last one so talking about the biological method so using living organisms so these are natural predators parasites and diseases of pests to suppress targeted pest population as it will infest the pests and cause harm or potentially kill it. So you can, yeah, definitely, uh, it's a definitely useful method by using living organisms which act as predators and basically used to suppress the population of pests. So it can definitely kill the pests and maintain the soil fertility. Some of the examples are braconid wasp, which is a biological control agent, infect and kill hornworm caterpillars. So this is another insect that is used which act as a predator against the pests another sort of predator would be bacillus thuringiensis is a soil microbe that makes a protein that are toxic to some specific insect so this is a genetic uh, say this is comes under genetic point of view so this is a, a, a bacillus thuringiensis is a bacterium that is used uh, present in the soil that is present in the that is itself present in the soil that makes certain toxins all right, so that makes certain toxin produces certain toxins that is harmful for the growth of pests or certain insects and there are several aspects in biological methods such as conservation and encouragement of naturally occurring biocontrol organisms by cultural techniques augmentation of naturally occurring species by purchasing and releasing and new controlled species specific to pests are sought and introduced so these are there are many sort of methods under biological methods so you can modify your methods also whichever you're using it and try it on it so this was about ip and talking about another method which is the chemical method so chemical method is a bit different from biological method definitely it is so it's just the use of chemicals that uh, suppresses the pest growth so chemicals used in the pest management situation that has an effective range of action and lower toxicity or persistence in the environment. So natural chemicals such as pheromones and hormones that are specific to target its pest species. So these are some of the hormones. So pheromones are chemicals that an individual releases to communicate with another individual of the same species. And pheromones are used to lure pests into traps. So these acts as uh, inviting agents for pests so that they can trap it and thus they can prevent it. I'm talking about another method which is the biorational method. So using chemicals that are less universe, universally toxic and targets, uh, targets a specific aspects of pest biology. For example, diatomous earth might be used to scratch the surface of insects to dehydrate them or biological pesticides that affect only a specific group of insects. So this is another method. So this is a just a sister modification or another type of chemical method that can be used for reducing the growth of insects and pests. So talking about some more methods that we have is the conventional method is the use of pesticides and insecticides that generally people use or prefer using it because it's not it's definitely it's costly, but it's less costly than inculcating these strategies such as IBM. Also be a preventive measure such as preventing the initial entry and spread of pests and such as quarantine, inspection and certified seeds. So these are some of the uh, overall method of IPM strategies that can be inculcated. So chemical pesticides, uh, biorationals. So this is the uh, suppression rate. So the suppression rate becomes the highest by using 
chemical pesticides and biorational strategies and so this is the culturing stage is the prevention step physical mechanical is the avoidance step biological method is the monitoring step whereas chemical pesticides on biorational method is the suppression step so suppression uh, percentage increases as we move from bottom to top so with this so where is ipm used so it's used in agriculture horticulture forestry human habitation and preventive conservation and general pest control including structural pest management turf pest management and ornamental pest management so there so these are some of the places where we can use integrated pest management so let us keep this video till here hope you enjoyed it if you enjoyed it please give this video a thumbs up i'll be back with another another video very soon so stay tuned and thanks for watching